morning and we welcome your presence in this place. May you be magnified, may you be exalted, may you be given all the glory, may you be given all the honor as we glorify your name this morning. May your name be elevated above everything, O King of glory. May your name be given the glory like never before. Let this be a morning we glory exalt your name above anything else, O God, in our midst. And may you, King of glory, reign forever, reign in this place, reign in our midst, reign in this service, and may you do wonders this day. May you, King of glory, bless somebody this morning with our praise and our worship. May you, King of someone this morning, and may you, King of glory, be exalted forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you put your hands together as we will come the children this day to lead us in praise and worship. Amen. Hello church. Good morning people. Good morning. So today we are children. We are going to lead you through this whole service and we are going to enter into a session of praise and worship. I hope you're excited. Yes! Oh. 
cause breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. The high breath.
let, let me hear the praise of the holy name of the Almighty God. Worship the Lord, worship the Lord, for He is holy. Worship the Lord, for He is awesome. Worship the Lord, for He is wonderful. Worship the Lord, for He is great. Worship the Lord, for He is merciful. Oh Lord, we worship your God. You are holy, our God. You are holy, our master. You are holy, our redeemer. You are holy, our savior. You are holy, you are holy, oh God. Even the angels in heaven sing Hosanna to your holy name. Sing holy, holy to you, oh God. Lord, you are holy, oh God. This is a moment, oh Lord of glory, that we have gathered in your presence to worship your Almighty Father and to lift up your name on my Almighty God, oh Lord. Father, King of glory, in the name of Jesus, we welcome your presence this moment, Almighty Father, to come and take control, O oh Lord. King of glory, in the name of Jesus, if it was not because of your mercy, O oh God, your presence would have consumed us, O oh Lord. But because of your great mercy, Almighty Father, you have preserved us, Almighty God, and you have called us, O oh Lord, by your own name. You have called us, Almighty Father, the chosen ones, O oh Lord. This morning, Almighty Father, we invite you, O oh Lord, to come and take control. We invite you, O oh Lord, to fill this place. We invite you, O oh Lord, to flow, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord of glory. We welcome your presence, O oh God. Let your presence fill us. Let your presence, Almighty Father, create a new thing in our lives, Almighty Father. Let your presence, Almighty Father, Bring healing in us, O oh Lord. Let your presence, Almighty Father, mend the broken hearts, Almighty God. Let your presence, Almighty God, set free the bound, Almighty Father, this morning. In the name of Jesus, Yahweh, we bless your holy name, O oh God. We bless your holy name, our King. We bless your holy name, our Master. For you alone is our God, O oh Lord. We know you as a Father, and we know you as a friend. What a, a wonderful God we serve, O oh God. Lord, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. We lift your name on high. For you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Come on, give a mighty hand clap to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Wow, wow, wow. I welcome you. I welcome you all in the house of the morning, in the house of the Lord this morning. Just rejoice, rejoice in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah! This is Children's Sunday. And we are just excited to see what is going to go on this morning in this place. Hallelujah. This is Sunday School Worship Team. Worship Team, God bless you so much. Thank you for taking us through that moment. May you go and take up your seats, please. Hallelujah. Before I invite the preacher, just turn to your neighbor and welcome him, welcome her in the house of the Lord. Just two people. As you welcome your neighbor, let me also recognize the presence of our brethren, our pastors from Sudan. They are also in our midst. They have come to fellowship this morning with us. This very moment, let me allow me to invite the preacher of the day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good church. Um, good morning, church. Uh, my name is Aiden Onguela, but since some, but since some few people have started calling me Pastor Aiden, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, I want to thank.
thank all of you for coming today. Today is Children's Sunday, um, one, of the, one of the best Sundays that I know. So let's have a short prayer before I begin. Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful day, for this opportunity to come and preach in your house, to worship you. Oh, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit comes and moves in this house today. Oh, Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. Amen. Praise God, praise God. I know that most of you already know about stewardship, as Dr. Eric said last Sunday. Um, I'll also be talking about money. Um, so there has never been a more crucial moment in time for the people of God to understand money than right now. I'm, I'm looking at how money is moving into the lives of people. And I want to see what God is doing with this money. Praise God. Yeah. And the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. Media team, project it. Um, a feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. So I'm going to translate this as an easier version, that money answers the things of God. And we all know that the love of money, as it says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, is the source of all kinds of evil. But this doesn't mean that money can be used by God to transform people's lives. We don't seek money for money's sake, but we do it to see what the power of God does with this money to transform people's lives. Hallelujah. Yeah. So remember what I told you, that there has never been a more crucial time for the people of God to understand money than right now. Because there's going to be an economic shift where resources previously owned by evil will be handed over to the church. Um... Some of, us know, some of us know that there's a pool of oil off the coast of Israel that is soon to be tapped in mine. And when this happens, Israel would have been shifted to economic power. And, and we all know as people of God that when God touches Israel, he touches the church. When God blesses Israel, he blesses the church. Can I get a hallelujah? I'm telling you, if you don't understand the concept of money and what God is doing with it and how to walk in a blessed life, you will be replaced with someone who knows what to do with God's money. Amen? Here's the truth. We should use our money not have a mansion, a fancy car. I know that some of you already have that. <laughs> no, we should use our money to glorify God. Hallelujah. As it says in Romans chapter 11, verse 36, media team, may we please have that on the projection. <laughs> for all things were created by him, and all things exist through him and for him, and to God be the glory forever. Amen? Amen. This this, this means that whatever money you earn, you should always give back to God. Amen? Amen? You should always give back, people. Please, give back. So here are two principles of mindset shift to change your view of money from seeing it as an object to something spiritual. I know most of you people here want money, but is that money you're wanting going to be used to glorify the Almighty? Hallelujah! These are the principles that can enable you to have a righteous blessing with God and, a ra and finances. Number one, God is the source of our money. For example, I earn my money through school. I perform well. My parents, erode me. my parents award me with money. But I didn't use all that money on me. I used 10% to tithe. I saved 80% and I used... 10% for myself, because I know that I'm not the one who scores the good marks. It's the power of God that enables me to score them. It's the power of God that enables you to, that enables you to be promoted to a higher position in your job. 
It's the power of God that enables you to get salaries. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It says, Deuteronomy. Remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to become rich. He does this because he is still faithful today to the covenant that he made with your ancestors. So that means if God's faithful to you, be faithful to him. Whatever money he gives you, give it back, people. Tithe. Man. So let's go to number two. Be content. So this is a condition of the heart that in any situation you're in, you're content knowing that God is the supplier of all your needs. Amen? For example, for example, um, for example, I like football. So, so I'm in the school f football team. So uh, there was this trip that we were going to Rwanda. That we're going to Rwanda. But then, my, my parents told me that there wasn't enough money. But, then, but after learning that, I, I decided to dig deeper and to find the money equivalent to spending to, ma to making me able to go in for that runner trip was equal to my little brother's school fees. So then I just, so then I just did, decided to give in because I, because I knew because I knew that my little brother was going to go back to school. And I was happy for that. I was very happy. So we don't need glitz and glamour or Gucci to be happy. We need... Says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. This means be satisfied. Be content with what you have. If you have a house, be content with that. Don't want a bigger house. There are people out there who don't even have a house. So if you want a bigger house, give out the house that you have instead of having two houses. You have a car, but you want five more cars. Buy those five more cars and give out four of them. Give out four of them. That way you're giving back to God. That way you are giving back to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I know all of you have elders, so I want to talk about respecting elders. I know it's not connected to stewardship, but the Lord told me to put this in my sermon. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Two. It says, do not rebuke an older man, but appeal to him as if you were, as if he were your father. Treat the younger men as your brothers, the older women as your mothers, and the younger women as sisters, with all purity. What it means to have respect for an elder. Leviticus. Chapter 19, verse 32. It takes a long time to go through this Bible. Almost there. All right, fine. Let me just go to the project. Um, you shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord. This is God speaking, people. This is God speaking. So you must honor your elders. Do not, whatever they tell you to do, do it. As long as it's good. Whatever they send you to get, get it. Whatever they tell, whatever money they give to you, make sure you give back the balance. And make
make sure that money that they have given you to be yours, make sure you tithe it back to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So let's go back to stewardship. What is stewardship? This is being entrusted with something that doesn't belong to you. A steward, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. You should, you should think of us as Christ's servants who have been put in charge of God's secret truth. The one thing faithful to their master. Now I'm not all concerned about being judged by you and by any human standard. I don't even pass judgment on myself. Verse 4. My conscience is clear but that does not prove that I am really innocent. These are apostles of Christ who are speaking. Verse 7, it says, No. Sorry, I lost track. Be found faithful. That's, that's what I think it says on the projector. Oh, so no. Be found faithful. What is faith? As it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. It was, their, it was by their faith that the people of ancient times won God's approval. Verse 7. It was faith that made Noah hear God's warnings about things in the future that he could not see. He obeyed God and built a boat in which he and his family were saved. Godly fear, as I, as I read in another Bible. This is the fear of God. So without faith and the fear of God, you could never be a good steward. Became heir of righteousness. I also read this in another Bible. What does this mean, you may ask? This means with faith comes righteousness. So you need three main things to be a good steward. Faith, the fear of God and righteousness. Faith, it says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. No one can be a slave of two masters. He will hate one and love the other or he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So, so be faithful, guys. Please, be faithful. Be faithful and God will be faithful to you. Amen? Amen. So let me talk more about faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. No one can please God without faith. For whoever comes to God must have faith that God exists and rewards those who seek him. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when you're a good steward, you'll please God. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2. It was by their faith that people of ancient times Want God's approval. A good testimony. I also read this in another Bible. Faith brings good testimony to the heart of the people in this church. So without faith, you can't have a good testimony. Without faith, you can't be a good steward. Without faith, you can't please God. Hallelujah. Ooh, that felt like a good one. Let me take you back to the fear of God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. To have knowledge, you must first have reverence for the Lord. Stupid people have no respect for wisdom and refuse to learn. The beginning of knowledge, that means to have knowledge. So with the fear of God comes knowledge. But fools despise it. These fools are the agents of sudden. I know that I'm scaring you that if you're not a good steward, you're the agent of sudden. But please do not be alerted. 
The people who rejoice in doing evil. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 13. I'm sorry, this accent is killing me. <sighs> Those who find pleasure in doing wrong and who enjoy senseless evil, unreliable people who cannot be trusted. So if you're not a good steward, you're the agent of sudden because you despise it. Praise God, church. So back to stewardship. So you need, say them with me. Number one, faith. Number two, the fear of God. The fear of God. Number three, righteousness. Yes. Finally, Pastor Collins is paying attention. May I get a clap for him, please? Um, number four, knowledge. And here are some others that I am not going to explain, I think because of the interest of time. Um, wisdom, patience, obedience, peace, hope, and humility. So now I'm going to end this sermon with a verse. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. says, let me read from here, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. This means, this means, that if you're a good steward, you will be lending to people. You may buy 10 cars, you remain with one, and you, and you lend out the other nine to people, to people who don't have cars, you know? And, and the work of your hands, this is the work you do every day. You say their housework, homework, the, the, the work you do in job, the work you do in your companies. Um, as, as Dr. Eric said here, he has four companies. Four companies. I don't know how that's possible, but he has four companies. And he's not the owner of them. It's God who's the owner of them. It's God who enabled him to build them. It's God who enabled him to earn money from them. So that's why he always gives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you enjoy that session? So lovely to see you in the house of the Lord. My name is Lucky Tender, and I'm going to be running you guys through the program. Um, so we're going to have offertory by this time. So I request you all get up and, like the preacher said, type if type. So we are going to go in for offertory. I request you all to stand up as we give in the house of the Lord. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And in the same measure that you give, you shall be re-given, Okay. So as we're going through this session, may you dig deep into your pockets and honor God with our giving. Um, and if you need an envelope, please raise your hand and the protocol team will surely deal with you. Um, let's pray. Father God in heaven, I thank you for this day and I thank you for the gift of life. 
I thank you for this beautiful morning. I thank you that you enabled us to be in this place. As we give, Father, may you please come down and may our offertory speak to you. May it rise like an incense to you, Father. As people give, may you replace from where they've given. Father, I speak over your people. I break the spirit of poverty. May you give. May you bless your people. Father, even those that are giving online, may you bless them. Bless them more than they are giving. Let them see your hand in your, their finances, oh God. May you continue to reward them for, for being faithful in your house. In Jesus' name I've prayed. So let's come and give. So let's call the worship team. Presentations. The children have so much in store for you, and I hope you're excited. First of all, I want to call baby class. Uh, the <laughs> baby class, can you come and give us your presentation? Let's, let's start for them as they come.
Praise God, church. Yes. Be blessed as we minister to you. We're going to request the media team to play their dance.
Thank you so much, baby class. Wasn't that wonderful? Let's give them another round of applause. So at this moment, I'm going to request the media team to play us the announcements. Welcome, church. Praise God, church. This is Kawempe Worship Center. I belong to this house. I am a living stone. In this house, I'm, I'm growing. My name is Joash Treasure, and my friend? Nastia Justin Treasure. These are our September announcements. 13th September, we shall have Girls' Night Out with the Mothers of the House. On 14th September, we shall have Evangelism Training. On 15th, we shall have the Young Married Men Meeting here at church. All young marrieds are encouraged to be here. On 21st of September, we have the leaders and ministers meeting. All ministers and leaders are encouraged to be a part of it. On 28th of September, we shall have the men's stiff, we shall have the men's breakfast meeting. All men are requested to attend from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. On, on 29th September, we shall have the marriage tea break. All marriages are requested to be there at 3 p.m. From Monday to Friday, we have daily prayers from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Every Friday, we have the youth overnight, and every Sunday after the second service, we have the youth service. We have baptism and baby dedication every last Sunday of the month. Bye. At this particular time, allow me to invite the lower class for their skit.
Praise God, church. This is P1, P2, and P3. We are going to present to you a skit called Sin and Its Consequence. May God bless you. Good morning, class. How are you, boys and girls? Today we are going to learn about sin and its consequence. What have I said? What is sin? Let us mention examples of sin. Yes, please. Stealing. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, please. Fighting. Thank you. Yes, please. Throwing stones. Throwing stones. Yes, please. Kidnapping. Kidnapping. Yes, please. Abusing. Abusing. Yes, please, Sean. Killing. Killing. Let us mention examples of people who sinned in the Bible and the consequence of their sin. Yes, please, Joy. Cain. What did Cain do? Cain killed his brother Abel. And what was consequence of Cain's sin? God cast Cain. Thank you. Clap for her. Yes, please. Yes, please, Elijah. Noah and his generation. What did Noah and his generation do? People were sinning before God and they refused to repent. And what was the consequence of their sin? God sent floods and floods destroyed the earth. Give him bottles of soda. Yes, thank you, Miles. Yes, please, Gabe. Sodom and Gomorrah. What did Sodom and what did the people of Sodom and Gomorrah do? They practiced homosexuality. And what was the consequence of their sin? God said the angel and the angel burned the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Thank you, Gabe. Yes, please, Christine. Jonah. What did Jonah do? Jonah, Jonah disobeyed the instruction of God. And what was the consequence of Jonah? He was swallowed by a big fish. Th Thank you, Christine. What are the lessons we have learned from today? Yes, please, Jaira. We have learned to obey God. We have learned to obey God. Yes, please, Chloe. We have learned to listen to God is in we have learned to listen to God's instructions. Yes, please, Anna. We have learned to repent for the bad things we do. We have learned to repent for the bad things we do. Today's, today's scripture is coming from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. Let us welcome Samuel to read for us today's memory verse. Let us welcome Elijah to read us the memory for today. Thank you, teacher Ann. My name is Mwanguzi Elijah. We are going to recite the today's scripture from Romans chapter 6, verse 23. 6, verse 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But the free gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's repeat one more time. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. 
Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, It says, For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But the free gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Elijah. Let us clap for him as he's gone. And that marks the end of today's topic. Thank you. Give them a round of applause one more time. I hope that you're enjoying yourselves. Um, I, I want to pass by this announcement. Uh, Revival Week will start on the 25th to the 29th of September. So how many of you are excited for Revival Week? <laughs> May you please be here. So for our last performance... As soldiers in God's army, we must wear the full armor daily to destroy every evil authority. With the helmet of salvation, my mind is free from corruption. My mind has peace and protection. With the breastplate of righteousness, my heart is safe from darkness. My actions show love and kindness. With the shield of faith in my hands, fear and doubt cannot stand. In faith I obey God's command. With the sword of the Spirit, I cut through chains of ignorance. God's word brings intelligence. With the belt of truth, we stand tall. With the shoes of the gospel, we can't fall. An army of God each answering the call. Thank you so much. Can you give them another round of applause, please? Uh, thank you so much for coming to the house of the Lord.
this time, may you please allow me to invite Pastor Robert Kasuzi for his benediction. Thank you. Wow, are you enjoying this uh, uh, Sunday? The children, how many parents do we have in the house? Okay. I'm going to ask the media team, the media team, would you make sure all the pictures taken in this service are uploaded on our WhatsApp group so the parents can get um, copies of their pictures? You need to keep these pictures in your, in your somewhere because we are creating memories. Ten years from now, all these kids are going to be adults. How many enjoyed Aiden's preaching? I think the mother got saved immediately. I know. Now, man, that English there is, is world class. <laughs> Pastor Aiden, he can preach downtown London. Yeah. Wow. I want to thank you, parents, for... Um, your dedication. The kids look so wonderful. They look so smart. Thank you for taking care of these kids. You know, every house, the greatness of every house is known by the people that they produce. I believe that these kids are going to be great, great leaders. And I, I want to encourage you parents, I mean, uh, if, if you're a parent and you miss to see, to come in church and, and just cheer your kid, support your children, be there as they, uh, as they perform, you are missing a lot. Every father should have been in this house. Every mother should have been around here. As I grew, uh, as I grew up, now I remember my times when I, when I did thing, things at church or I never went to church. But when I did things in, 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 um, in, uh, in school and, um, or speech day or anything like that, and I, I never got a chance to have my parents come and put a uh, clap for me, cheer me up, support me, I always look back and say, I wish I was supported morally by their presence. But they, um, I never even did anything because I, I never knew what my parents wanted wanted me to be. But these kids are going to be amazing. The, the worship team. So this is, this is the dream, parents. Parents, this is a dream we have for, the, for your kids. We want all of your kids to grow up, not only knowing the word of God, but they need to grow their skills. They need to be skillful in everything they do. So we, 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 put, we invested over, I think, over a million... 50 millions in, um, in a music school. We have a well-equipped music school right here at the church. We could have used that money to build the sanctuary, but we decided that we, let's do these things that gives our children an opportunity to grow skills. So we have guitars, we have all those things that your kid needs to come and learn how to play drums, uh, guitars, keyboards, how to do sound, how to do media, and they need to learn it at a very tender age. Because many of you don't know what it means to, to, to have a skill because you never got an opportunity. But here is an opportunity. Here at the church, we are the cheapest in town. Pastor Juko, Pastor, uh, Pastor JB is here and he's been working with these kids all this week to train them, to equip them. And so I'm encouraging you people. I'm encouraging you pa uh, parents, if you can talk to Pastor JB and make an appointment for your kid to come and learn at least one instrument, at least one instrument. By the time your kid is, turns 20, they should be able to stand here and lead the worship uh, by themselves. Just figure your kids playing a guitar and leading us all in worship because they can you 
you parents, you, don't you believe that your kids can do more than you, you can ever do? You can never be jealous of your own blood. Do everything to make sure that whatever you miss as a kid, you give an opportunity to your kid. By the time they are, your kids, their children are 20, they should be able to play at least five instruments. Our dream at the church, that all these kids, when they leave Uganda, when they leave Kawempe Worship Center, and go in London, Netherlands, South Africa, Mexico, Japan, Taiwan, uh, Sweden, Poland, all those kids, this, these children should, will go. But they should be self-sufficient. They should be able to be leaders. No one of these kids is going to go out of this, this church and take a back, a back bench. We are producing leaders, people. Amen. So I want, I've been told there, there is a, did you say it's a market? It's a market. So there, there is a market somewhere on the campus here. And I've been told as you go out, please go out and buy something from that market. Uh, Gillard and the team are working on it. But I want, I, want to, I want us to stand up and conclude this service. But I want to refer you back to Pastor Aiden's message. Someone. That was powerful. I mean, I, I, know, I know many of us was like, oh my God. The kid just preached a powerful message in 15 minutes. And got me, got my attention, got me saved twice. And now I'm, I feel like I'm more born again. And so he preached about money. And we've been doing this thing for the last four weeks now. We did three, two weeks. Uh, Pastor Eric, Dr. Eric was here last week. He did his portion building on what we started. And I, how many people believe that God is speaking to us about money? So I want us to end this, this, this series about money with a, a challenge. I'm throwing a challenge as your pastor. We all struggled. We all struggled with money. And our relationship with money starts at the base of a tithe. I want to give everyone a, an opportunity. I'm gonna, can I have the pastors come and stand here and face the audience? I'm going to I'm going to challenge you. If you've been struggling in giving your tithe, if you've never been able to trust God that you can tithe, I'm throwing a challenge for 90 days. If you've been struggling with tithing, are you listening to me, people? I'm throwing a challenge for the next 90 days, three months, three months, starting next Sunday. You begin to tithe faithfully for the next 90 days. And if by the end of those 90 days, 90 days, the Lord has let you down, You will come and he will give you back every money you would have tithed in those 90 days. Are you listening to me? I'm throwing a challenge because I want you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm helping you to build your faith because I've been where you were as a person, struggling with the tithe. But I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity to raise your faith. So if you've been struggling in being faithful with the tithe, or you've never even begun, especially those of you that have never tried because of fear, I'm, 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 I'm giving you this opportunity. The next 90 days, starting next Sunday, give a whole tithe for 90 days. And by the end of no, those 90 days, if we just a loss, if you just anything negative, you come and say, this is how much I've given through tithes. But God has let me down. And I promise you as a pastor, we will give you back every coin you would have. Am I clear? Let me say this one more time. In the next 90 days, 
give your tithe faithfully. For those of you that are first timers, you have never given a tithe and you want to start now. I give you 90 days. At, at the end of 90 days, you will come back to any of these pastors and, uh, and, tell, them, and tell us, I've given this much in the tithe and God has let me down. I'm ashamed and I'm, 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 I'm disappointed in God. We will give you back every coin you would have given in those 90 days. No question asked. So if you want to build your faith in tithing, especially if you have never started tithing, would you walk to any of these pastors and let them pray for you as we begin the 90 day challenge. Just walk. Ninety days. Just walk to any of these pastors and let them pray for you. And don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. We all have struggled in this area. We all have struggled in this area. Just walk to the pastor and let them pray that within the 90 days, the Lord will bless you and will give you whatever you need and you tithe from that for 90 days. Come on, people. Some of you, you tried it. Then you, you gave up. We'll take just a moment, people. Be faithful. I'll give you more, more than this. I'll give you more, more than this. Not just a little, not just a part of me. Not just a little, little not, not just, just a part of me. I'll give you more, more than this. I'll give you more, more than this. Not just a little, not just a part. Every hand lifted as we sing, I'll give you more.
supply of oh, me. Not just a little, not just a pile of me. I, I don't know why I feel like you need to break this thing off your life. The only way you can break poverty off your life, you got to believe God that he's able to supply your needs. And the only way God can bless you, you got to be a faithful steward. And I feel like many of you are struggling in the area of finances, but here is an opportunity for you. Here is an opportunity for you to lay it before the Lord and say, I, I surrender my finances. You need, you need to break poverty of your life, poverty of your, of, of your family. Many of you, the Lord intends to bless your family through you. And you need to break this thing and say, I'm going to be a man that trusts God to be my Jehovah Jireh by providing for my needs. And I'm, I'm praying myself to obey the Lord by tithing. And so I'm going to give you one more minute so you can come true to yourself and stand in the gap for your family and know that you do. The pastors are waiting. I'll give you more, more than this. I'll give you more.
worship you, Jesus. We glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. People, we don't even need to record your name. All you need to do at the end of these 90 days, come to any pastor on the campus and say, I've been tithing faithfully. The word is faithfully. If you skip a day, we won't know, but the Lord will know. If you skip anything, the Lord will know. We want to know. We are not asking any questions. And when you come to claim your money after nine days and say, I've been tithing and God has disappointed me, just tell us the amount that you've given within the 90 days and we will refund all your money. The point is not how much we can lose. The point is to help you as a person to grow your faith in the area of finances. And I'm telling you, those of you that are going to test the Lord at his word, I, I know the pastors have prayed for you, but I promise you, my friends, in those 90 days, your finances are going to be flipped up like this, and the Lord will begin to bless you and deal with sicknesses. And those things that have been coming in your pocket to take your money, where every time you get a salary, and it comes in one way, goes in a hundred ways, it's going to stop within the 90 days and you're going to see the blessings of God that like never before. If you are faithful, my friend, if you are faithful, the word is faithful. It doesn't have to be too much. The little, 10,000, the 5,000, take the fast out and be faithful in the presence of God and say, Lord, I'm testing you. 90 days. If you don't bless me, I'm going to go back and I'll shame your name before the pastors and I'll tell them that you lied. Your word was bless your people in the country. The work of our hands.